billions of dollars, not millions, billions of dollars, many billions of dollars to position their brand as a high-end luxury so vehicle, right? And the S500 is a vehicle that sold for 85000 They have vehicles that are branded Mercedes that are selling for $100,000 and more. Then they decided, in their infinite wisdom, that they would sell a Mercedes for $30,000. You can't be all things to, to all people. But why did they do that? From a marketing perspective, what they did was breathtakingly stupid. From a manufacturing standpoint, what they did was really brilliant. Because their challenge, what had a stranglehold on them, was they had this excess capacity. In manufacturing, you can't be profitable operating your manufacturing facility three days a week, four days a week. Because you have a tremendous fixed cost in your business with your manufacturing facility, your distribution center, and those costs are not invisible. We can't sweep them under the rug. We have to account for them through what we call fixed cost absorption. That means that each unit that we produce absorbs a percentage of the fixed cost. And so the more units that we produce and we sell, the smaller the dollar amount that each unit has to absorb. So from a manufacturing standpoint, them introducing a car at $30,000 that's branded Mercedes had a significant positive impact on the financials of that business. Their profit increased dramatically. But from a marketing standpoint, what they did was they eroded the equity that they had in a high-end luxury automotive. Because you can't be a car that's branded Mercedes that sells for $125,000 and then a car that sells for $30,000. Well, which one? You, so you have, what, this is some type of bipolar brand? What is, um, you know, marketing? If we say, what is marketing? Marketing is about creating, communicating, and delivering value. That's what marketing is, the essence of marketing. Right? We could spend a whole semester, we could spend several semesters talking about what marketing is. But in essence, we could distill it down to those three components. Creating, communicating, and delivering value. So that kind of begs the question, what is value? What do you think value is? If marketers are responsible for creating value, what is it? What's, what's value? I think it depends on the demographics. It depends on the audience. Targeting. So it is, there is a, um, it does vary based on an individual, right? It's based on perception. So what is it that they're perceiving? Brand equity. Yes, the, but, and so what does the brand contain? What information does the brand contain? Perception of the brand. Right? Which would be, for, like what, for example? That would indicate value. What it is, what is it about what does the brand name communicate that would suggest value? Luxury, high-end, something exclusive. So it could be, but what about something like uh, quality? When we say what is value, value is a function of quality. <laughs> so if we're going to evaluate something and determine whether or not the product has value. We have to consider the level of quality. And what about the, the benefits, the features of the product? And also... I think it's difficult to say because, for example, really, like, the reason I say it depends on your target, depends on your audience, because I also think it has to do with culture. For example, I use a certain brand of cleaner for my house, 
And the reason I use it is because my grandmother used it, my mother used it, so I used it. And I've never seen a commercial or an advertisement for this product, but I know to use it because it's been passed on. So, I, to me, I don't think it's so much where, you know, like, I won't use Thai, I'll use this product called Suavitel, or I won't use Downy, because I'll use Suavitel, or I won't use Lysol, because I'll use Fabuloso. I think that's what it, it's right. for me as a consumer. And so what is, um, how do we take that into account when we think about value? Well, is one, it uh, brand preference? Brand preference, and one, it is cheaper than, you know, a downy or a tie. So price. Tie, absolutely. So price. So we could say that value is a function of the price, the benefits, and the quality. And when we say price, when we talk about value, we got to make a distinction that it doesn't mean low price. So something is a good value because it provides, let's say, um, a certain level of quality. Now, if the quality is very high and you have a significant number of benefits and the price is also high, then it's a good value. I think it's also, it depends on the, the, the brand. Like sometimes, you know, when you see someone that has on a name brand, you know, shirt, jacket, purse, shoes, whatever, you know, it could be just that that person is maybe all about labels. Just the fact that, you know, okay, it's a Louis Vuitton bag and it's got to, you know, last me the rest of my life and I paid six, seven hundred dollars for it, but you can probably get the same bag, you know, in a, a small, small boutique. You know, Thing. It's just, it's not the name but to your point, we said that um, value is something that's subjective mm -hmm. to the consumer. So to each consumer, they have to decide if something is a value. They have to decide whether or not the quality and the benefits is enough to justify that premium pricing relative to other products. But it's not just one. Uh, I just want to be clear that when we say something is a good value, it's not just that, oh, it's cheap. It could be that the benefits are acceptable, the features are acceptable, the quality is acceptable, and it's a low price. That is a good value. But at the same time, something that has a very high quality and many benefits and many features that is double or triple or even ten times the price of the uh, competitive product could still be perceived as a good value. So you get what you pay for. So for example, Sony. Sony is much more expensive than uh, Panasonic or other brands, but the reason why they're able to get a premium for their product is because people believe, and in many cases it's true, that their products are a better quality. Did they come out with a, a did, did Sony come out with a lower priced model of their merchandise too? Really well, companies could have um, a portfolio of brands mm -hmm. that target multiple price points. But this is the question, right, that you want to have addressed as it relates to Mercedes. What did they um, do wrong? A brand has what we call a certain level of brand elasticity. There's so far that you could stretch a brand. The question is, how far can you stretch a brand? Now, you can stretch a brand across multiple price points. That's okay, but the question is, how wide is the range? Now, with Mercedes, why did they, why were they able to sell so many cars, so many Mercedes branded cars, based on what we just talked about, for $30,000? Because people wanted to have Mercedes, but they might not have the money to buy a $60,000, $70,000. So if they have 30 grand, they could buy Mercedes. And there's something, yes, and there's something a little bit more, like based on what we just discussed. What is it? What, what is the perception? Mercedes, that's why. It has the symbol Mercedes Benz. Value. There you go. It's a good value. 
Now remember, when they decided to introduce that